we'll be talking today about uh, becoming a firm of the future, adapting to a rapidly changing landscape. Uh, we've got a fantastic panel um, today. Uh, we've got Morris uh, Tani joining us, who is a director at uh, Technology and Innovation at Keystone Law, uh, a full blown, fu fully blown remote firm for, for quite a few years now. So he will be telling us uh, how they have been uh, leaping ahead while everyone was trying to figure how to operate in the last three months. Uh, we've got Ed Turner, a managing partner at uh, Taylor Winters, uh, an international uh, firm with uh, offices in the UK and Singapore. Um, and we've got Charles Dryson, uh, who is a consultant and former partner at Harrison Clark uh, Rickerbees and now working in uh, exciting high-tech uh, organization uh, having to do with robotics. And of course, last but not least, we've got uh, Peter Buck, who is uh, VP Product Strategy at uh, NetDocuments. And of course, myself, um, Timo, I, I run Cosmonauts, I run a bunch of other stuff. and. Uh, probably some of the events that uh, you would have been attending if there wasn't a lockdown uh, this year. So uh, I suppose the best way of um, setting the stage is to, is to explain a bit more about Keystone Law for anyone that, that doesn't understand how we work and who we are. So we're a, a traditional law firm in that we offer legal services to our clients. Um, uh, but that's pretty much where the traditional sort of stops in that we're not a partnership. We are a business. We are a, a company run by a board of directors who are all experts in their field and um, not by sort of partners who've worked their way through the through the business. Um, and they it's it's an aim listed company. So um, we listed about two and a half years ago now. And um, fortunately, the share price is, is, is still doing well. Um, but it's 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 different in that it's we provide a platform all of our lawyers are are self-employed lawyers they they come to us with their business and we provide them with the platform on which to operate the, the systems the 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 processes and the people so that they can run their businesses uh, as effectively and as efficiently as they can and um, it's a it's an eat, eat what you kill model in that whatever the lawyer earns they keep 75 percent and we keep 25 percent and for that we provide them with obviously the the amazing it systems but the the marketing the branding the 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 platform on which they can operate and most importantly the the professional indemnity insurance that's a very expensive uh, item for someone trying to to start a business on their own um, but most importantly for them is it, it, the brand and feeling part of a firm even though they are self-employed and and, and uh, working in a, in a sense on their own um, but the, the 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 biggest differentiator for us and and I guess part of the reason why I'm speaking today is is that all of our work, lawyers work wherever they feel comfortable so um, they are not in uh, in big shiny offices in in city centers and they are working from home from a garden office from clients offices uh, from some of the slightly more annoying ones are working from their holiday homes in, in Spain and in Italy. But it, it's it's a firm where there's no hierarchy, there's no politics, because the lawyers are coming to us with with their own practice, but then we provide them with the framework and, and the, the tools in which in which they can operate. What we did was we looked at, at, at sort of best of breed products for what we felt they needed. And then when we didn't find something that that would work for them, we decided to build stuff. So um, there's sort of four key areas of, of our sort of IT table. The first being the Microsoft Office Suite, which obviously everyone has access to. Um, then there's Microsoft Teams is the second leg of the table, which um, enables them to collaborate um, internally and externally. Um, and the third leg of the table is is net documents, which obviously uh, uh, Peter can tell you far more about. But it, it was something that we found very easy to select because it ticks all the boxes for us. It um, it enabled everything that we needed to do. It enabled the lawyers to work remotely, securely, um, collaboratively, and and in a user friendly and flexible arrangement, but really scalable. So. We took on, I think, 100 lawyers last year. 
65 of those senior lawyers and 35 of those sort of more junior lawyers that those senior lawyers have have brought on board because they've their practice is starting to grow and um, and it it takes 10 seconds to, to add them to the net documents platform but the flexible side came up very quickly with net documents we found that some of our lawyers were based in quite remote areas i'm in kent with four mega broadband so if we cut out um, apologies but um we found that they were in remote areas but also on the road a lot so having the, the cloud access to to the to the main net documents platform and um, was sometimes tricky so what we we had a chat with with net documents and they said oh well we've got a, a another area of of the product called nd sync which allows you to to save your files uh, locally and then it syncs back to the to the cloud as and when they've got internet connection so it had that flexibility that we needed so that there's this sort of two different flavors of net documents and yet still we're happy because the documents are secure and compliant and stored centrally and the lawyers are happy because they've got access to the documents whenever they need them and um, the fourth leg of the table um, is is something that we we felt there wasn't a product in the market that met the needs that we needed which was to to provide the nose to tail uh, sort of software for the lawyers to, to do everything else they needed to do so that's where we went away and, and built something um, and uh, I'll show you more about that and talk to you more about that in a minute but that's something that we've called keyed in um, but uh, yeah those are the, the four legs of the IT table um, and I'll come back to you in a minute on on the keyed in back to you Peter that's great Morris and uh, Timo if you don't mind just going back one slide I think the reason that we brought this team together and why we wanted Morris to share the story of Keystone is about this notion of, of, of business foresight. Um, and the idea of net documents as a global platform supporting hundreds of thousands of daily users and uh, accepting onboarding millions of files daily um, with really interesting analytics on top of that, uh, a fun fact uh, that we collect almost uh, 30 billion signals every single day so we can look at things like how is performance in an outlying region? Uh, what is user behavior? And we'll share some of those behaviors just in a, in a minute, which I think is quite fascinating. But I guess at the end of the day, the, the point of the story is that every millisecond does count. Um, and then when we are in a full swing of remote work, that becomes important. Um, and so we think that document management is digital currency in these uncertain times. You know, without a source of truth, the source of truth that's delivered via the cloud, um, it becomes uncertain. Um, that source of truth to support business transactions, regulatory investigations will simply stop. Um, and it's ultimately about digital work that has to be both simultaneously porous and secure. Porous, is, uh, as Morris mentioned a second ago, related to ND Sync, being able to securely work offline yet have that content protected um, uh, remotely and as it ventures back to our platform. And secure because compliance and good information governance mandates it. You know, porous because those boundaries between business partners as uh, Ed and Charles do work, they need to be able to deliver those solutions to their business partners and it can't be encumbered by complex on-premise software. So that's how we sort of thought this group would come together in kind of an interesting way. The reason that we're sharing um, um, the last slide was to show at the fact in this complex times, revenues and growth continues to be stable. Our second quarter uh, of this year was our fifth best quarter um, uh, in the company's history, in part because the cloud and the platform uh, is ready. The other thing, and I know we'll talk about this in the panel in just a second, is the behaviors we saw. I, mean, I mentioned all of the um, analytical data we collect on our platform, and we did a lot of surveys. It was interesting, at the time of the lockdown, 92% in Europe and 87% uh, in the United States and North America were productive within 24 hours. I thought that was a great uh, testimony to a platform that allows you to be agile and move in business ways that you might have never anticipated. The other interesting point was that um, the number of amount of user productivity or number of transactions on our platform, you can see the millions of transactions we do uh, daily, that transaction volume went up. It's up uh, over 20% uh, um, 
in the first uh, four weeks, and it stayed at, at about 15%. Um, um, on the ongoing months, which I think is fascinating. That just means, to our view, the platform accommodated the change in patterns, not change in patterns that uh, Morris's Keystone team sees every day, but many of our other customers. And other two little interesting facts, and I'd, I'd be curious if we get to the panel later, later if they see this and those uh, listening online see this, is that um, after a normal work hours, we saw an additional three hours per day of activity on the platform sustained uh, throughout the week. And then Sunday, which was traditionally a, a, a waterfall day, meaning the business activities would drop off uh, significantly, uh, they uh, have come back as a, re a, a very strong, productive uh, day of the week. Um, so uh, I think we, we call it Swiss cheese that, you know, as uh, the days change and our demands change, the platform seems to be able to uh, accommodate that. So I think that's fascinating. And we'll come back and talk about a few other things, but the last point I wanna make just about where we are with the platform, and this ties back to uh, Keystone's strategy around Microsoft Teams, is that um, um, last month we released ChatLink, which allows you to integrate net documents within uh, Microsoft Teams so that workspaces and documents can live alongside conversations and that's a big investment area and we're going to continue to drive resources in that demanded by uh, many customers um, and that's easy for our platform to respond to that the other point i want to make and i think we're going to cover this a little later um, in the chat is around market forces and the demand for efficiencies i think ed and charles will talk about this from their perspective um, as a lawyer that efficiencies in the legal sector, including what I call monitoring, guiding legal work to completion. We have a set builder product that facilitates teams to collect and organize and publish groups of documents, you know, frequently called deal Bibles. That's been a really popular product. I mentioned statistics earlier, our um, real-time communication product called, ta uh, called Thread, that had 138, 140% increase in utilization much like Microsoft Teams, this part of our platform. And then finally, I wanted to make a, a point around a product that we're just finishing work on and um, early adopter customers will begin using it uh, next month and it's called Tasks. And we looked at Tasks uh, many months ago as a way, as we're in this completely new digital uh, world, this digital currency I mentioned, allowing documents to be associated with repeat work with activities required to complete a legal representation, complete a transaction, complete a project. So that those tasks can be easily rendered into a series of steps and associated documents. So the idea of the platform being able to adapt to these different needs, Keystone's needs to deliver a distributed environment, other global firms needs to have a consistent practice around document closings and around uh, transactions supported by our upcoming task modules just means that it makes it easy to organize and manage documents, these, this new digital currency in this new world of remote work. So it's fun to be able to see how customers use it, fun to see some stories and how Keystone uses it. So I think, Morris, back to you and let's have a look at, uh, at Keyed In. Yeah, thanks, Peter. So, uh... I mentioned earlier that the four legs of the IT table. So the fourth leg being keyed in. So keyed in is is uh, something that we um, had to build from scratch. It's something we used. Um, so the latest technology, and it's it's something that we haven't just built, rolled out, and gone right. That's great. We're going to sit back and 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 uh, and hopefully everything will be fine. It's 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 always it's a constant work in progress. We we worked with the lawyers. We we tried to understand how they wanted to work. And what we tried to do was not sort of pit, force people to work in a certain way. We we realized that different lawyers work in different ways. So we we made sure that we built a, a platform that enabled everyone to work in the way that they wanted to work. So it, it was flexible enough that it accommodated different working styles. Um, and within Keyed In, um, they are able to do everything they need to do. So they can time record, they can create clients and matters, they can uh, they can run reports, they can create bills. Um, everything on one platform that's on a secure 
platform that they can access either from their laptop or from from their mobile device. Clearly, there's a, a slightly more limited real estate on a on a mobile device, but some of the the fundamentals that they need to do all the time, they're able to do. So, an example of of the flexibility. So, for example, time recording. Some lawyers are, are very keen to, to 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 use timers and start and stop and and see exactly where they are at all times, whereas others are prefer at the end of the day to 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 add in the times that they spent on each on each activity and then there's others that do that at the end, end of the month they keep a, a rough track on on a spreadsheet uh, clearly not the right way to do it but it's the way some people do it and um, and then they they can do a mass upload so we've built the the platform to to accommodate different ways of working um, and as i said earlier it's 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 a work in progress. We're constantly updating it. We're taking feedback from from existing lawyers and probably, in a way, more importantly, new lawyers who've come from from other organisations where they might have used a very different tool set and gone, "Oh, it's really great if you could do this or if you could add that bit of functionality." And the great thing with with having a bespoke platform is we're able to to accommodate that, and and we have a development team that um, are absolutely fundamental to to to, to the to the running of the business and they can adapt to the, the product to, 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 to fit. Um, and the other thing we do with Keydin is, is we always make sure that we're conscious of, of saving time for the lawyers. So uh, little things uh, on the client creation, for example, um, we've built an integration with, with Companies House. So if um, they are adding a client that is a limited company, rather than having to type in all the details of that limited company, that's already available on Companies House. So we have a real-time API, and it looks for the name of that company, pulls that information back, populates it on the screen, and it saved the lawyer probably only two, three minutes of time, but time is money in their world. And more importantly, it's, it's the data integrity. You know that that data has already been uh, ratified by the Companies House. Um, and there's also extra information. There's company director information, there's key contacts within that organization, all great data that we can pull back and, and, and use um, within, within, the, within the matter information. Um, and other sort of quick wins, um, we've uh, integrated with a product called Signable um, for electronic signatures. So a lawyer can literally start, um, create a client and matter uh, and start recording time within probably about five minutes. Um, and and with that, they've also sent out an electronic uh, engagement letter to their client, and and they can carry on working. Clearly, they can't bill that client because there's there's money laundering and, and conflict checking, and and that's going on in the background. We've got a team um, that is doing that for them. So it, it's all about efficiency. It's all about trying to save the lawyer uh, time and effort so that they can just focus on what they love doing, which is it, which is being a lawyer. So I think the beauty of the platform, and it doesn't show, um, it shows great um, um, in person and in this video, was the idea of we're officially in the digital era. And I think Keystone, with your thinking around remote work and with the keyed in platform, doing the mundane and making it a digital transaction, um, I think is the big, the big lesson, the big takeaway that I think of every uh, one of our customers is talking about and doing at some level. I was talking to um, um, innovation officer at one of our big global uh, clients and they said, finally, we're in the digital era and now new work and new ideas can emerge. So I think keyed in is a perfect example uh, of that. So yeah, yeah. thanks Peter. And, and I think the great uh, litmus test for that is that COVID has had zero impact on on our lawyers ability to work um, they've just obviously productivity levels in different areas has been affected but in terms of their ability to to, to do their work um, yeah nothing has changed and we haven't had to make any changes uh, in order to for that to happen so how well equipped most uh, big law firms are uh, in terms of remote working um, and uh, is remote working um, actually providing the, the ability to uh, remain uh, at optimal capacity and not optimal effectiveness? So uh, I think the way I the way I see the transition for us. So we we were a largely office based business, and I don't think 
<clears throat> we represent the views of, of big law as such. I mean, the, the, we're a relatively small organization of, of 150 people and a 20, 22 million pound turnover. Um, but well, for me, the, the issues are a combination of both technologies. So that's about facilitation, but they're also as much about, about culture and, and in some senses as a leadership team, what the last four months has taught me is, is the, the huge number of assumptions that we were making that were getting in the way of our progress. So, um, you know, assumptions about what our lawyers wanted, assumptions about what our clients expected, assumptions um, and probably a, a degree of uh, a degree of complacency in the sense of we had we, we as an organization had focused very much in the last 10 years in, in transition on uh, in focus and identity. So um, focusing our business from a from a regional multi service multi client platform to a to an international business focused on the innovation sector. So we were making the transition the, the changes and the progress that we were making seem to to be there for us in terms of what we could do with 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 focus with culture with identity and therefore in some senses uh the the way we worked and a technology that supported that was always something which was following that or you know contrast that to keystone where clearly the the technology platform has facilitated the entire business model and very effectively so i think in in some senses i can look at i could analyze the last four months in terms of the problems and challenges but actually i think what it's done has been a it's been a huge eye-opener and an opportunity and it's it's moved us forward um in accelerated the progress down down a path that we were traveling i was um uh, i'm pleased to say that we are on the journey towards cloud we're not there but i suspect you know we're already having conversations about how that journey is now going to be foreshortened by I would have thought at least 12 months um, from where we were probably, we were probably by the time we'd procrastinated and fannied about a bit more with it, probably a couple of years away. But, uh, you know, we're, we're even looking at whether we can do that in, in six months now because the transition we've achieved in the time. Now, I still think that that step for us, the, the way I look at it now is that there is the basic, can I operate in a, in a um, remote environment? That's a relatively easy one. I think most law firms have made that transition. It's now about um, making that an elegant way of working and integrating it with um, with the with the office environment as well. Because I don't see us moving towards a fully remote setup. I can absolutely see us resisting going back to a fully office based setup. And I think where we'll hopefully end up is in a in a happy hybrid where we undertake the tasks that are best carried out in a collaborative um, shared environment in that in the office um, and and the task which can equally well be carried out um, solo at home um, with with the use of tools to be able to collaborate with um, uh, clients with uh, uh, other uh, partners and um, uh, with our clients um, carried out at home because then that you know for, for the reasons for the business for for the for society for for the environment, you know, we've just the, the last four months has just been a slap in the face to us all, I think, and just said, actually, guys, you know, enough's enough. Let's 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 move forward. So I I I kind of funny funny enough characterize it the last four months not as not about the challenges of remote working, but actually the opportunity of remote working. And, and Peter, um, has requirements related to the systems that you provide changed or altered in any way? uh in in the past four months like what were the type of requests that people uh come come to you with well i think the big theme and i mentioned this in the opening remarks is what we term workforce continuity there was this concept before business continuity if something breaks you want to make sure it still works in a redundant site but workforce continuity i think that hits on ed's comments around there's going to be this uh, as I mentioned earlier, porous world that you're working, doing some work at home, some work at the client, some work in the office. And so now as a technologist, I'm happy to see that, you know, there's going to be better leverage of those tools and the rise of things like our thread product and the Microsoft Teams uh, product. So I guess, but one of the demands we continue to see is the ability to exclude and include locations that can access our service. And one of the things that 
our service provides for uh, customers to do directly is those lists, those include and exclude uh, lists. And that little minor things like that are thoughtful that cause you to adapt the platform um, and it should be part of your work, not something that um, is uh, dictated because whenever it has to be compelling enough to be used. I'm going to make a slightly controversial position on the, on the That's workflow. Like you mentioned you. work, you mentioned workflow in the, uh, in, in the question, Timo. And, and I think workflow is a concept that outside the back office in law firms is not yet that in the forefront of lawyers. I didn't think, as most businesses would understand it, workflow is anything that lawyers would particularly grasp. And that might be to do with, you know, I mean, on on this call that I, I you know, knowing the sort of firms that I do, the nature of the work, if you look amongst some other firms, I mean, my firm, for example, is still a full practice firm. So we still do residential conveyancing, wills of probate and that sort of thing, which a lot, a lot of firms now don't do. But there is still a section of law where you have large volumes of processes and if I use my wife, for example, who's responsible for a housing stock of about 10,000 houses where she has the legal work to do with, um, you know, I work on about five or six projects at a time. It's pretty easy for me to manage those in my mind with a few notes and with teams and things like that. They can't do that. You know, there, there are still quite a few lawyers who work in that sector where workflow would really add a lot of value. And I don't think we've yet seen much of that evident in law because um, the, the concept of process systematization and the rigors of some of those things are still quite frankly in its in its uh, infancy in, in many parts of law and i think that will change um and i don't think it's a i don't think it's a threat to lawyers i don't think it's an insult to lawyers i think it will it will support them uh, trying to juggle those things without proper workflow tools is really jolly hard uh, so i expect to see that with something in the years to come we will see more of and if we don't the outsourcers they'll take it away from the law firms and they'll show how it should be done. Uh, so if, if, if the law firms don't get it, there are plenty out there who are quite ready to show them how to do it. I think there are already, oh, sorry, building work next door. Um, I think there are already a few firms that are taking this very seriously and have done some great work. Um, but yeah, again, it's big budget. So it's normally really large firms that can afford to do it at this stage. Lots, lots, lots about, you know, tasks are an important part of what we're trying to deliver that that sort of middle ground charles um uh so that you can still have some structure but it's not uh the demands that a workflow structure imposes uh, hey um just real quick timo there was an interesting question in the uh, chat just about um integration and i think it was made by a couple comments by the panelists about the importance of having tools that can integrate and work together. Uh, so there is some sort of seamless uh, alignment to the work process, whether uh, Ed's comments, I think keyed in to tie it back to the opening remarks sort of as an example of that integration layer. So I, I guess as a tech, putting the technologist hat on for a second, that's an area as a checklist and a, and a goal that you need to make sure there is an ability to integrate. Teams has done a great job of providing an open framework so that lots of things can come into teams to do that sort of single pane of glass. I worry though, uh, Charles, perhaps that Teams is gonna become the next Outlook, just like Microsoft produced Outlook for email. I'm, uh, teams certainly seems like it's moving in that direction, but but I digress, so. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure. Thank you. you have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.